Greetings and welcome to Faith Moments, a weekly podcast to proclaim and to ponder our Sunday Mass readings. Well, welcome to the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. It is October 23rd, and we have beautiful readings to continue really a teaching about prayer. And as I look at the theme that we're going to unpack a bit today, it's really the priority of prayer. And let's listen to what Jesus has to say to us about prayer. The opening collect, which you'll hear the priest lead, and we collect our prayers. We collect all of those intentions. We bring them up at the very beginning of Holy Mass. This is what the priest will pray on this Sunday, the 30th Sunday in ordinary time. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Beautiful prayer inviting us to increase in faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and love. Our first reading comes from the book of Sirach, chapter 35. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petitions reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The Word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 34, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of of the poor. Our second reading comes from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and my time of departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me which the Lord, the just judge, will award me on that day, but not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 18. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray, 
One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we continue to hear this message of prayer, and we remember the visualization we had of Moses last week as the Israelites were in battle, and it was when Moses had his arms stretched up high in this prayer position that his people would be winning the battle, and when Moses grow weary, then they would lose the battle. It's when we're in this strength or when, this, when we're in this trust of God, when we continue to keep that communication open, which is really prayer. It's our heart responding to God's draw, God's heart, God's desire to us. That's when things go well. And then when we lose that connection with God, when we lose maybe direction, maybe we lose heart, we don't seek God's heart. We don't seek God's will. And maybe we start doing things our own way, or I think this is probably the best thing I can do. Those are the times in our life, in our culture, when we start to go astray. Beautiful words from Sirach. If you just read, in fact, I read the whole chapter of 35, and there, there's these great proverbs and just really this way of how to live the good and right life. And here's just a few lines that we hear in this scripture today. He hears the cry of the oppressed. There's this reminder on and on in Sirach and in many places in the Old Testament that the Lord hears those who cry out, those who cry because of injustice, because they're enslaved, because they are being oppressed. He will hear that cry. His, peti his petitions reach the heavens. And this gives me great hope that, that sometimes we pray a prayer and we wonder, Will the Lord even hear this? How is the Lord going to hear this prayer amidst so much difficulty under a state of war uh, in all the chaos that I might be experiencing? But this is so beautiful. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. You know how strong, how mighty is the prayer of the lowly, the prayer of the humble, the prayer of the simple, the prayer of the weak, the prayer of those who are being persecuted. And the Lord will not delay. You know, that's the promise that we hear from Sirach. And, and there's an uh, acknowledgement that when that cry comes out from those who are in a lowly state, that that prayer that reaches the clouds will not rest until it reaches its goal. Now we know many prayers aren't answered exactly how we want them to be answered, right? We know that it's thy will be done, not my will be done. But the Lord does promise that he will answer those prayers. It will reach a goal and the Lord will not delay in his time. So as we think about our prayer life, there's this reminder that the Lord does hear our prayers. That is important that we pray. And, and that we can't time God. Okay, Lord, I, I started this novena. It's already 10 days past the novena, and I don't see this new job. I don't see this relationship healed. I don't see my cancer gone away. I don't see the end to war. But the Lord will not delay in what is necessary right now. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I think that's such a beautiful psalm. We hear it a lot throughout the liturgical year, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. May that be encouragement to you 
in a time of distress, in a time of difficulty, that he does hear and he is close and he does draw near to the brokenhearted, to all those who are crushed in spirit. How many people do you know? How many people do you see out in the world today in stories that you read that are crushed in spirit? The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. Those who follow God, those who obey the Lord, the Lord redeems them and takes refuge in them. That is such a powerful message and a message of hope. This parable that we hear today from Jesus, and I'm going to go into the Bible here into Luke because we started chapter 18, Luke 18, last week, and we heard, do you remember the parable of the persistent widow? And so we hear this story that Jesus, again, this is a story. It's not something that actually happened, but Jesus is picking individuals and maybe uh, types of work or or states in life that people can identify with. And people can identify with widows, uh, their particular state in life. They didn't have anything. They weren't worth anything. Nobody really listened to them. And so here's a, a story of a widow who is consistently calling for justice in her particular situation. And she's going against a judge who doesn't care about anybody. He only cares about himself. And particularly, he wouldn't care about such a widow who is worthless in his eyes. And yet that man, that judge, will decide to offer a favorable ruling for the widow because of her persistence and because he fears getting struck by the widow. Maybe he'll get a black eye and she'll smack him. But because of her persistence, because she never gave up on what was right and what was true, what was just, that unjust judge will make a just ruling. The, the point, persist in prayer, be genuine in your prayer and continue to persist in what is true, what is right, what is just. So that's one parable that we heard last week, Jesus teaching the people. And now he's particularly directing this story. And it says right here, you know, Luke points it out that Jesus addresses people. He notices people in the crowd who are self-righteous. They are full of themselves, and they are convinced of their own righteousness and they despise everyone else. Have you ever met a person like that who, who is completely egotistical? We maybe see them played out a lot in movies or on, uh, I don't watch television, but on television sitcoms, I can think about probably when I did watch TV in the 80s, you know, there's like one character that everybody despises. Well, I think of like the draw, the soap operas. You always have the one character who everybody hates because they're so self-centered and self-righteous. Well, Jesus is seeing these characters played out in real life in his day. And so he imparts this story. And yet it's along the theme of what's so important to a person of faith's way of life. And that is prayer and what prayer is all about. Because he says two people went up to the temple to pray. Now he's speaking to people who know and who probably are very well-practiced and well-versed at how to pray. I'm going to pray this way in the temple, and this is the Jewish tradition. And if you don't pray it exactly this way, well, then there's something wrong with you. You have no way with God, you know, and you're going to have lots of uh, reasons why you would never have your prayers answered. But he's pointing out that these two different people conduct themselves differently. Not only what they say, he points out the words that they use and, and in how they speak the words of prayer. But even more than that, we get a sense of the, 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 the way, the posture of these people and how they actually posture themselves when they come into a moment of prayer. And so we hear the Pharisee and it's a really short word, but they say, the Pharisee took up his position. So it makes me think of 
hey, I'm high and mighty. I'm, I'm a high ranking Pharisee. And this is my location, which is way up in the front. We're in this, 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 uh, special reserve spot, you know, the reserve seating that sometimes you get because you're a VIP. Well, the Pharisee is treating prayer like I am in VIP seating. I'm up in the beautiful uh, front row seating. And he prays to himself. And so it's really more an account of checking the boxes of all the things I've done so great, Lord, don't you know how great I am? And his posture is very pompous and very self-righteous. And yet Jesus then points out very simply the tax collector who stood off at a distance. You know, he was so aware of his own sins that he didn't feel worthy to even approach God. Have you ever felt like that? I can't even approach the Lord. But his willingness to meekly come into the Lord's presence, even if it's so far away, and he beats his breast, he puts his head down, you know, this posture of humility, this posture of, of realizing and recognizing when I have done wrong. <laughs> I've really gone wrong many times, Lord. And he recognizes that and he calls out with an open heart be merciful. I am a sinner, Lord. Whereas the other Pharisee was full of himself, egotistical. I heard somebody say ego stands for edge God out. All he could do is think of himself and even compare himself to others. I am so righteous and so much better. And so Jesus is really pointing out this format. It's not a good word to use. This way of prayer is filled with humility, with emptying oneself out. And so he closes by giving these very familiar words we've heard so many times. And yet, how often do we follow them? Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And everyone who humbles himself or herself will be exalted. Beautiful words to remember how important prayer is and how do I conduct my daily prayer? What's my countenance? How do I approach the Lord? Do I pray? How did you learn to pray as a child? Did you learn to pray as a child? How have you learned to pray now as an adult? Do you have a family? Have you taught your family how to pray? What are the different ways in which you may pray today? I'm starting to read this series. It's called In Conversation with God and several volumes of short reflections and writings on this, the daily readings, including the Sunday readings. And in this commentary for today's Sunday, the 30th Sunday in year C, there's a beautiful quote from Pope St. John Paul II. And his feast day was celebrated this weekend on October 22nd. And so it says here that at the beginning of his pontificate, Pope John Paul II declared this, and just hear these words from now a saint canonized in the church, John Paul II. For me, prayer is the first priority Prayer is the basic prerequisite to service of the church and the world. Every believer should always think of prayer as an essential and indispensable component of one's vocation. It is the opus divinum, which precedes and overshadows every work. We well know that faithfulness to prayer or its neglect is a test of the vitality of religious life, apostolate, and Christian fidelity. Pope St. John Paul II is saying prayer is essential. It has to be always in our life. In fact, he went on to say at a gathering of clergy, and think about Jesus in his words, he's looking out to the crowd and seeing many who don't get it, who don't get a right relationship with God. And Pope John Paul was talking to a group of clergy and religious. And he said this, 
a constant danger with priests, even zealous priests, is that they become so immersed in the work of the Lord that they neglect the Lord of the work neglecting a prayer life, neglect, neglecting that time, what Mother Teresa made so popular, an hour of adoration before her sisters would go to work and do work in the missions. Archbishop Fulton Sheen would do the same thing. I must have my holy hour, no matter my travel schedule, no matter what, I must have that time with the Lord in prayer. Prayer is indispensable for you today as yesterday. We must find time. We must make time to be with the Lord in prayer. And that's really the spirit behind this podcast. This Faith Moments podcast is really to give us, to give me an opportunity to read over the scriptures, to listen to other people who may have reflected on the scriptures, to hear homilies, to, to be in conversation with God. And so today, reflect in this reading as we hear about the humble tax collector who recognizes his own faults and his sins. He needs a savior. The Pharisee doesn't need a savior. He doesn't really need God. There was nothing in that prayer that acknowledged a need for God. Think about your prayer. Think about what you say when you pray. Is your prayer recognizing you need a savior, you need the Lord, and you need to make a change in your life? Look forward to talking with you again next week. Pope St. John Paul II, pray for us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God bless you, and have a very blessed week.